Mike, let's get down to this uh, three uh, monkeys we saw today. I use the term not that these men are monkeys, but the old expression about see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. Yeah. It's an old Chinese yeah. uh, uh, sort of iconic uh, description of when people don't tell the truth. How are these companies going to continue this joke they went on, this Marx Brothers routine, this Three Stooges routine, yeah. if you will, where each was pointing at the other? This is what criminal defendants do. They always say Joe yeah, did well, it or Max did it so that the, the, the jury gets confused. Are we going to be confused well, at the end of this? From beginning, no, you're not going to be confused. There's because one of them is going to be clearly, uh, you know, it's not. It's just not one event. But I got to tell you something. Here's what. Here's what's being missed on this. The first, with the first couple of days this occurred, BP came out from the standpoint of their OPA responsibility, which is a, a statutory responsibility. We are the responsible party. Then, right. when this thing started getting out of control, the disaster that we're seeing. Oh no, it wasn't just us. It was Halliburton. It was the defective valve. And you know what? It's going to continue because this, Chris, I got to tell you something. People are looking like this. This is a, a walk in the park on a cleanup. This could put this company under. Now, I'm, I'm telling you, today I saw an article in the, in, the, uh, in the paper where it says, look, this is not a big problem for Halliburton. It is a big problem for BP and Halliburton. It, with, with, with something this catastrophic that's going to go on for this long, it's not just the cleanup. The cleanup is $20 billion. What about the people that have lost their livelihood? What about a culture that's been completely wiped out along the Gulf Coast. This is more than a $20 billion pro uh, problem. And I got to tell you something. If people aren't thinking that BP has it on their mind that they're going to look for some kind of protection down the road, they're wrong. Let me go to the government end of this. Uh, Mr. Garamendi, yeah. Congressman, uh, congratulations on being a congressman. And it's a wonderful opportunity to make law now. And I look at this situation. The president of the United States is allowed to have a vice president who in many ways looks more powerful than he does. And Dick Cheney, of his own volition, says, I'm bringing all the oil industry tycoons into the office with me. Absolute secrecy. We're going to set energy policy for a democratic country. We're supposed to be a democracy. Yet the policies made in the secrecy of the White House, no press allowed, no records kept. Absolute secrecy. And then we find out that these guys at Halliburton, one of his companies, in fact, the company that paid him $34 million into the vice presidency, has gotten their pick of the regulators to regulate Halliburton. How do we stop this? It seems like a third world banana republic would do it this way. Well, first of all, you better elect the right people. We knew when George W. Bush came in that he was an oil man. And we knew that uh, when uh, he chose Cheney that we were in for an oil economy. And we got exactly what the people voted for. You got to be aware that elections matter. They make a big difference. There ought to be laws. In fact, there are laws. Congress did its very best to try to get that information. But executive privilege was pulled to shield all of that information. Wrongly done. We're going to have to hammer away at this. And these kinds of problems should not be allowed. It really depends upon who you choose to elect as a president. If you're choosing an insider from the oil industry, you better expect the oil industry is going to call the shots, and they did. But it's only part of the puzzle. Halliburton has been on the edge of the law, if not an outlaw, for this entire last decade. Take a look at what you just talked about, the establishment of the oil policy. Look what they did in Iraq. There's been extraordinary scandals that involved Halliburton in Iraq. Hundreds of millions of dollars disappeared when it was sent off to Halliburton. There are problems after problems after problems, but it goes back to who's president. Take a look. Who does that person serve? Do they serve the interests of the general public, the environment, or do they serve the interests of the oil industry? No doubt about where George W. Bush was coming from. And then when he chose Cheney and Halliburton, hey, the die was cast, <laughs> the problems were created. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. I think you put it together. Uh, Mr. Papatoni, we'll have you back on. I think we have the facts. 34 million bucks in the pocket of Dick Cheney, his regulators in the regulating positions of his own company. Nice deal they got there, Dick. Anyway, Congressman John Garamendi, thank you, sir. Thank you, Mike Papatoni. Good luck with the suit.